The opera itself, or as I call it, popra, um, is, is called Two Moon Smile, uh, where it occurred as sort of a, a, a um, dilapidated, unfinished concrete squat in the middle of an urban, rundown, highly populated, um, imaginary city. And the squat itself is um, uh, visited by many young people who come to hang out with Pink Lycra and her musician friends, Diva and her um, agents and hangout people, uh, the Two Moon Smile Group. So Pink Lycra is a very charismatic, um, uh, self-deluded figure. She wears Pink Lycra, a padded Pink Lycra suit, full body suit. Um, she's amazing, charismatic, attractive, beautiful musician, a beautiful dancer, she's sexy, she's um, distant, um, un unattainable and she becomes the, the charismatic leader of this group and um, in concert with another beautiful musician, um, Diva, who has with her a bunch of, um, a, a bunch of um, scratch artists and a small band and a, a, rather, a rather sleazy bunch of agents. Um, uh, Pink, Lycra, best, Pink Lycra's best mate is Shadow Guard. He's the perfect friend, the perfect um, guard, looks after her, all her needs, and is secretly in love with her. My idea about it being a popera, two things, it gives me license to write in the vernacular and not have to be too arty in where the music comes from. <laughs> I think it's a fun piece and that's why I think it's important. There are two components to, you know, I was talking about the vernacular, have it in the vernacular which allows me to write basically rock or pop in that, that kind of style. I find that fun, it's a fun piece. At the same time I designed the approach to the music in a different way. I wasn't going to write a massive choral symphony that would take me seven years and then I present it and try and get someone to perform it. I decided I was just going to write works, arias, pieces, instrumentals as they were needed and asked it of me. But that um, that allowed me the luxury of, of just trying to write a beautiful piece, hear it performed, then write my next beautiful piece, and so on and so forth. Um, that they're, they're quite serious arias, arias but I, I've, I've allowed myself scope to, to talk in a certain way. I, I'm, I've allowed myself scope to add keyboards into things. I've allowed myself scope so that the live musicians um, have uh, scratches, in, scratches with them. Um, it can be done in a black box space, or it can be done all uh, beautifully costumed and and um, in a much more complex, complex theatre space. Um, well, I think the music is entrenched culturally. So uh, the Helion uh, Consort and I have been collaborating for quite a, quite a while. It's time we put this music together in a larger and present in a larger frame and present it. Um, uh, they've been uh, playing this music for the last four four years. Um, we we'd like to present this music in a. Um, comprehensive fashion and show the narrative, the story, um, show the characters in all their, in all their fullness and uh, piece, piece together this, uh, this pop in a way that is, that is, is fun and attractive and, um, um, and the audience is, is, is feels like they're part of it.